We are currently in Kawakawa to check out the public toilets built and designed by the famous artist Didi Chon de Plastic. This is cool! He chose the small town as his second home and used to spend the New Zealand summers here. In fact, he spent most of the last 30 years of his life working and living in Kawakawa and also became a New Zealand citizen. Oh, After a very productive visit of the toilets, we continued looking for art by Hundertwasser in Kawakawa. Everything seemed to have his touch. We became particularly interested in a huge Hundertwasser-themed mural. Convinced that the mural was done by the great artist himself, we took a keen interest and went on filming it. Especially the inspirational quotes that were all over the place. By complete chance, the principal and teacher of a local Kawakawa school, responsible for producing the mural, walked past and started talking to us. You know, which is just a little thing, but it's a huge thing in the context yeah. of Pontevasa. Yeah. Yeah. When we made this mural, we only had 50 children in the school. Mm. Okay. And that was an optimum size for us because it allowed us to have three classrooms with small numbers of kids. So you can do lots with them, you know, rather than having a class full of 30 kids and not being able to have that individual time with the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And our school is special in that it's it's a small school but it's set in a bush setting. So we've got seven hectares of bush around the school. Okay. So our children are encouraged to go and climb trees, go and play down Beautiful. the bush. So some days if, you, if you're the teacher on duty looking after the kids, you've got to go down the bush because there's no one on the playground. You know, they're down the bush making huts, fighting over sticks, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So it just builds a different type of child. I don't know whether you can understand that, I can understand but it does, it. but they, they're totally, re totally relating to nature. Like we're yeah. a Māori community where the school is, so yeah. the marae is the centre of our, of our school, mm -hmm. of, of our community, yeah. and so that's why the marae is in the middle of the community. So that's, that's the marae, it's a meeting house, the central point of the community. Okay. You know, in, the, in the Polynesian villages, they're all centred around the one meeting house, the okay. big house. Yeah. That's the same thing in Māori culture. It's the marae is the centre of their universe, if you like. Okay. Kotahi Tanga is a guiding value of we're all one. one. We may be different okay. colours, different religions, different races from different countries, but we're all one. Yeah. So that's Kotahi Tanga. Manaki Tanga is is treating others as you would like them to treat you. So if you have, if you're the host, you. The, the way that you host people reflects back on you. Yes. So if you're a good host, then then people will, people will like you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kaitiaki Tanga is is guardianship, guardianship of everything, the yeah. nature. Um, yeah. So um, the nature will guard you back. We are responsible. Yeah. yeah. We are responsible. Tohunga yes. Tanga is um, is a deep is a is a deeper one. Tohonga Tanga loosely means a reader of signs or a use a, a user of technology nowadays. Yeah. Every Māori village in the old days had a Tohonga who's like, I'm guessing loosely it's a witch doctor in other in other countries. Mm -hmm. The Tohonga was very respected. He was hand fed. He was not the chief, but he was very important in the village. And it was his his job to interpret the signs of nature, of when it's good to plant, of when it's not good to plant, or when it's good to go raid other villages when it's not. So Tuhonga Tanga nowadays is loosely saying it's a, it's a person who's able to interpret, interpret the signs that are going around. Mm -hmm. um, Rangatira Tanga is leadership and Ukaipo. Ukaipo is nurturing, to be nurturing. Ukaipo actually refers to mother's milk, like a, a mother feeding her child, nurturing her child. Uh -huh. Whanaunga Tanga is, um, is like treasuring family, um, building relationships. Okay. And kota oh, we've got Kotahi Tanga again. Just, it's just one. Two. Every, every, everyone is part of the whole closet. We're all on the same boat. Yes. Okay. That's really, really inspiration. Yeah. It's, it's something perfect. Really, and it's really nice to to teach children things like that. It's so important. It's really important. It's amazing how much support it's had. 
Yes. And how many people come and stop and, and have their photo taken for it? Yes. The Asian people especially. You know, we've yes. had wedding parties up in heaven. You know. I'm quite sure that most people think it's done from 100 Wasser because we thought the same. We thought it's made from 100 Wasser. We didn't, we didn't realize that this is not from 100 Wasser. No, he made the toilet. Not they, to take anything away from there. So yeah. how did this mirror come to be? As part of our journey to make children or bring children closer to nature, we were doing plays about birds. Um, and different types of birds and their stories in, in Māori tanga, in Māori. Um, so we wanted a backdrop for the play. So we asked, one of my teachers asked her, her sister, who's a, an artist, to come up from Tauranga, which is down in the North Island, further south, to come up and put a backdrop together. So she did, and um, she, she painted it on, well her and the children painted it onto building paper, which is a a product you put underneath the roof on a house it's mm -hmm. not meant to to last long but once we once we finished the mural it was too good to throw away so we entered it into an art competition which just happened to be on and it won a prize and so we were we were able to put that prize and fundraise for some more money to to put it into a more permanent sort of format which is how this came about and so we got the whole community involved in coming along and, and up to the school and having a go at putting one of these on or painting one or making one of the ceramic eyes. And so we had old people, young people, we even had a dog. There's actually dog's footprints on here because everyone who made the mural or had a go put their handprint on it. Yeah. And so there's actually a paw print of the dog. The dog's name was Max. So it was a, <laughs> it was a really big community effort to make it. And when we put it here, like we thought it would maybe last for two or three years and then people would get bored with it and we'd have to take it down because that was the deal we made. We could put it up, but we had to take it down when it deteriorated. But it's been so popular, the whole town sort of adopted it. So we've gone through the stage of me having to come down every day and looking to make sure it's all right to having people saying it's all right, we're, we're watching it. Yeah. You know, they've, um, the business communities, um, Put up lighting as a sort of a security measure but all, at night it sort of backlights the, the highlights the mural yeah yeah so and and hundavas the, the man who it's based on lived locally like the school is karatu but the area is called um karatu and he had a house about well, five or six k's away from the school from the school yeah yeah, yeah. and he would he worked closely with a couple of the locals from the area, so he was part of our, we'd adopted him, you know, yeah. just as he had adopted the Bay of Islands as his home in New Zealand, we sort of adopted him. And so it was nice. important that we um, celebrate his life through the artwork, if that's at all possible. And to do the, the artwork, we had to ask permission from the Hundewasser Trust in Austria. And um, they've actually... Um, taken it on board too they love it and they sent us back um, a letter of congratulations for doing it and for just putting the thought into into Hundewasser so it's been really successful so long may it last and you are a teacher at a school yes I'm a teacher I'm the principal the headmaster of the school okay and what's your name my name is Ken Ken Timfoley due to all the interesting information that Ken provided during this interview especially his commitment to creativity and art with his students. We were very excited to continue this spontaneous documentary, even though it was his holiday and we just met while he picked up a coffee. Ken was more than happy to do so. So Ken, yes, where are we? We're at Carter Two School, in the middle of Ngati Manu, which is the, the, the local sub-tribe of the area. So on our, on our school name right the centerpiece is the is our pa which is where the old Maori village was right and the pa's name is Puke Tohu Noa and it's just Puke over there behind yeah. those trees so. awesome should we go inside let's so an interesting piece here we expect our cows to read <laughs> we expect cows to read. We expect our cows to read. <laughs> and respect I think, I, that I, we don't want them inside the gate. I think you may have more intelligent cows in New Zealand than mm. we do have in Switzerland. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you that the, the tiles that the children had made. So again, it's that looking at nature and, and um, celebrating the beautiful things in nature. 
So the children are all um, made a tile, which we've mounted on the front of the school. Just so taking each, something. Each, each tile was done by one student. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So you can you can tell we're not a very big school. Yeah. Although we're popular at the moment, we started off with uh, I think 52 children when we made the mural in Kawakawa. And at the end of last year, we finished with 73 students. Wow. Is there more than one school in Kawakawa? There is. There's a big there's a big primary school in Kawakawa, and there's a high school in Kawakawa right. as well. Right. But we're one of a few small schools that are surrounding the right. area. Is it a private yeah. school? No, nope, it's not it's a private pu school. Public. It's a public school. The government tried closing it in 19... Oh, it's in 2004. The minister tried to close it just to rationalise the number of schools around. Right. But this local community got really um, got behind the campaign and saved their school. And now it's it's one of the biggest little schools around the area. So. Right, so this is the school garden. That's just awesome. So the children, again, it's all part of that getting back to nature and teaching them about sustainability. Each child's got their own tyre, or they share it with a friend. They grow whatever vegetables they can, and then they, when, it's, when the vegetables are ripe, they take them home and eat them, or they prepare something here. So Ken, what about these tyres? Can we go have a look? Sure, sure. Awesome. So we're entering the spiral. The spiral is actually another shape from nature. In fact, sure. it comes from the, the Māori word koru. Koru. Yep, which is, uh, that, that there is a, is, a, is, an, is, a part, is a punga tree, a tree fern. Looks like a big fern, yeah. And the young, the young sprouts come out of the tree and turn into a, a, a koru. A koru, of yeah. course they do. So Fantastic. they've just imitated the, the, the sign from awesome. nature. Okay. That's great. Okay, so each of the children has got their own tyre or they share it with a friend. Their job was to paint. Obviously, Hundavasa was into, right into colours. Right. And they've decorated their tyre and it's their own special little garden. Yeah? So That's fantastic. And each student has one tyre, you said? Yep. Yep. And once the kids get out of school, they can take their tyre with them? No, they don't. they don't. No, they don't. The tyre seems irrelevant when they move on to uh, onto high school or, or leave schools. But they they will come. They can come in here at any stage and, and tend their own little garden, pull out That's the awesome. weeds. You know, it's just. A, Do you know if any students have gotten interested into gardening, or they have started their own little garden at home because of this project? Oh, we've got we've got one little boy who's who's right into it. You know, if he'll come to my house and he'll eat locals, which is a fruit, and he'll take home all of the seeds and he'll grow all the seeds. So, That's so cool. Yeah. It must be awesome to be inspiring young people to, to, to do something that... It is neat. It's just like someone magically being able to read one, you know, from one day to the next, you know, the light goes on. When you see that glow in their eyes, that, that something they've managed to do or something they've grown, you know, or they pick up a tomato and think, I've grown that, you know. And eat it. That's it's magic. A, it's a That's magic. It makes all the hard times worthwhile. Sure. Yeah. You know how on the mural in town I was telling you about the school venues? Sure. There's just another way of representing it here. So called Tahitanga, Whanaunga Tanga, Kohonga Tanga, Manaki Tanga. Yep. Just taking that shape from nature again. It's a beautiful flower. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Who came up with the idea of creating a, a flower with hands? Just one of the teachers. They have the occasional good idea. So all teachers are interested in, in art, obviously, and they, they try to push this. They've all got their different bends, you know, yeah. little bents or, or yeah. interests. Yeah. 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 Some cool. are more musical, some are more um, language orientated, some are arty. Some, some are more logical. Some are more logical. Yeah. You have to teach math as well. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to go and show you that one more mural that we've got. Sure, okay? I'd love to see that. If I can find the right key. Thank you. So, obviously it's the holidays. Yeah, um, nobody. Everything's cleaning up. Everyone's cleaning up. But I just wanted to show you that mural. If I can find it. It's not hanging yet. Right. So the original of the mural was done on builder's paper. Right. 
Um, this is the original. Uh, the, no, this the is the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the panels from the mural. See it? That's just fantastic. That's the original mural. There's about nine panels. That's so so cool. And so when we made I, it, we just felt it was too too much of a tonga, too much of a treasure to just throw away. Yeah, sure. So we had to do something with it. And I can imagine it must have been an, an awesome challenge to then have a wall and be able to yeah. co well, copy it onto there with, with new materials. It was um, stuck up around this room here, around the walls. But we've repeated, last year we repeated the bird plays. So again, we needed the backdrop, so yep. we used it again. Nice. You know, recycling. Yeah, always. Recycling. That's right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Is this going to go up somewhere? Or is this, this will probably... We might put it back up in here. Yeah. Fantastic. And That's then, it. then, is there another piece that you wanted to show us? I did. Behind this picture over there is, is another one that's going to go up in the front of the school. Not every mural is a success. I don't like this one. Right. But the one behind it is brilliant. If we go to this one. So this one is actually going to go up on the front of that building here. We're replacing those windows. Right. Yeah. And then it has to stand the test of time. The, the colours have to stand the test mm. of time. Mm. So this was also a, a big collaborative effort? No, this was just done um, with uh, two groups of children from here. Yeah. With the idea of actually just putting up around the school to beautify the school. But it tells a beautiful story of the... Because you know the eels migrate? I didn't know that. Do you know that? I didn't know that. So our New Zealand rivers are full of eels. Yes. Um, long finned eels and short finned eels. And they migrate when they're adults. They migrate all the way from New Zealand over to the Mariel, I think it's called the Mariel Trench. No, Mariana Trench off Tonga. The deepest. Yep. Order. And they breed there. Unbelievable. And they, they come back. They come back. So the, this mural symbolizes the, the stream of the eels going... Just the migration of the eels. Yeah. And the young eels, which are called elvis. Yeah. And the symbols here, are they Maori symbols? They're Maori symbols, yeah. yeah. You can see the kōru again. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a symbol that we've seen on the highway quite a lot. And I thought this is a symbol that there is surf. If you think of that tree fern and the new the, the new um, the new shoots, yeah, they go into a quarter. They go into that. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like a wave too. Yes. Yeah. Teresa, uh, Teresa Ray Hunter, who's a local artist, came in and did a couple of sessions with the children. Any future endeavors for the school? No, we're just going to carry on doing what we think we do well. Um, the main thing is is there is a Maori saying that you can't move forward unless you appreciate where you've come from. So our journey with the murals in town and with these murals here is relating to nature, but also giving the child um, knowledge of their place. Yeah. And, and once they've got that strong base of who they are and where they come from, they feel comfortable. And that if you're comfortable, then you, you, you can grow. You can spend more time growing outwards. And so in, in Māori Dham again, um, they, everyone should understand their whakapapa, which is their genealogy. And, and so a, a part of that is each child at Karatu School learns what is called their pepeha. It's, it's a speech. It's a speech of introduction that, that tells everyone where they're from. So in Māori Dham, it's their mountain, their maunga. Here, our maunga, or our mountain is Herangi, which is a, the highest hill at the end of the valley. And then there's your river, which is Taumata there. It's their river. And then there's their waka, the, the canoe that their people came to New Zealand in. And for us here, it's Ngātoki Matafaurua. Um, again, for Ngāti Manu, Karatu, it's their pā, their village, the first village, which is um, Puketohunua, which is over the valley. 
and then there's their marae which is karatu and then they start with their grandparents and so if you're maori or you know anything to do with new zealand then as soon as you hear those things you can say i know where that person comes from they might even know the family name you know which is which is really great it's it's empowering i remember the because i'm actually I'm actually from Ngāti Mani. I was born in Kawakau, but my Māori blood comes from Ngāti Mani. And I can remember the first day that I got up and said my mihi or my pepeha on the marae, I, I was a mess. I just cried and cried and cried because it was such a meaningful thing for me. Sure. You know? That's beautiful. So it's giving the children those ties that they can grow from. The roots, if you like. Their heritage. Yeah. Yeah. Nurturing the seeds so that when they, when they grow, when they leave here, they can just grow. Blossom. That was a beautiful statement. Thank you so much for showing us around your school. It was truly an insightful experience. We met you at the mural and now we've had a tour of the school. We wish you all the best for your future endeavors with the kids. We hope that you can teach many more classes to come. Thank you Marcel. It's been my pleasure actually, an unexpected pleasure to, to meet you guys this morning at the mural. Indeed it has. And then again it's been a pleasure to bring you out to, to my home, to my school. Um, I'm glad that you've got something beneficial out of it. I hope you get something beneficial Absolutely out of it. Absolutely we have. Um, we're proud of our mural. We're proud of um, what we do as teachers in New Zealand. So um, I wish you all the best for your continuing journey. Thank you so much for Cheers. your time. Cheers. Ken. Thank you. Thank you. If I had one message for future generations, it would be respect who you are respect who you come from, respect your elders, respect your environment, and if to take a quote from Hundavasa, spread the love.